All right, it appears we are live on uh, January 10th, 2020. And uh, gonna be inking this Thanos drawing you see. And uh, got Ron here with me, say hello, Ron. Hey, hello, Ron. There you go. And uh, gonna get some- Tater says hi. What's that? Oh, hey, Tater, how you been? Let me see, I gotta get my, um, Where's my chat here? There we go. All right. So I missed yesterday, which may or may not have been a good thing. Because uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, able to have Ron here today to kind of look at the comments and I can concentrate on the art. So that, uh, that will be good. And I have up today as you may have seen another Thanos that I penciled out and gonna ink on unfortunately I still don't have my white ink I might have somewhere but I don't know where and I know I have some at home but it does me no good there Sean says hello he's in hey Sean how you doing bro or as Jacob would say bruh <laughs> Uh, so, hey, I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, the last stream, for coming back in. Had a, uh, actually a lot more people than I had anticipated since I'd been away for such a long time. So it was very good and picked up some new subscribers. Goal this year is to get this channel up to about 2,500 subscribers with a stretch goal of let's double that to 5K. Possible, yes. Probable, possible. yeah. Probable, yeah. Could all happen. There was uh, some commercial... Um, some, some commercial some time ago. Uh, it was kind of interesting. I mean, this was really some time ago. And I can't right now. I, I just kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> I thought about it for too long. The setup was, it, it took too long. Maybe it'll come back to me. Anyway, hope everybody's had a good week. Mine has been a bit hectic. Uh, actually, the start to my year has been a bit uh, <laughs> not was not what I was expecting. Hasn't been horrible, mind you. It's just been a little bit annoying. I had some some stuff mapped out I wanted to happen earlier, like real early in the year that kind of put off uh, that I'll, I'll implement next week, hopefully. I'll start getting a, a better um, better schedule, hopefully. So I know this is a uh, Friday. Uh, it's just about lunchtime, so... Hopefully we have a good turnout as we did uh, Tuesday. And if not, I'm blaming Ron, right, Ron? That is correct. Yeah. What are you eating for lunch? What am I eating for lunch? I haven't had anything yet but a coffee with some trivia, which, by the way, that trivia was very good. You know, if you were a real yard sale artist, you'd show us your lunch. <laughs> but I'm not a yard sale artist. And, and I don't have... Uh, my wife's not bringing it in to me while I'm making the big bucks. You know, she's got to keep the man at the at the board fed, right? I am only jealous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yard's got it easy. I get served nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I I feel that. Although I I do get some some good cooking when when the wife is in the mood to cook, uh, she can uh, she can really uh, make it special. I have had uh, this week a couple of nice steaks from the grill run and some uh, some of her famous uh, green beans and also some uh, uh, what's my favorite that I love? Oh, Brussels sprouts that were very good. Yeah, she makes some mean green beans. Yeah, and the same uh, butter and garlic, salt and pepper little thing the brussels sprouts and the beans very good <clears throat> so if my sound is not as good as it was tuesday it's because with mr ron being here i didn't i had not bring not brought my wireless headset to my office today so I had to revert back to my old uh, trusty all-in-one headphone, and yeah, it's only got one ear, uh, which I actually like, because I like to be able to hear the ambient noise around me. I don't know why. I guess it gives me some sort of a sense of the outside, what's happening, in case I need to... Uh, <laughs> and my voice is cracking up a bit here in case I need to uh, take action somehow. Ron will be heading over to the uh, improved studio tomorrow so that we can further... Uh, Tighten, tighten up some, or tighten down. What do you want to say? Tighten down, tighten down some, uh, some stuff, Ron, so to speak. I think I lost Ron. Yes, his, his, he's muted his microphone. I hope that was on purpose. He may have got a call he had to take, so. No, I had a package from Midtown Comics. Oh, hey, up in Sean's area. Sean's area. He knows that place. <laughs> you getting comics, Ron? Yeah, I get some pulls from there. Okay. I didn't know. I thought maybe maybe you got another action figure. No. <laughs> you like that? I liked it. Okay. I, I got you uh, book four of the uh, the curse. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know what you know where it was at. So the interesting thing, or kind of interesting, if you know, if nobody's noticed yet, I'm redoing my website, and it's it's a mess uh, right now. I need to. That's another thing that that I'm going to uh, be working on in the next few weeks. Going to be streaming more. My next convention is not till the end of February, so. I will have some stream time. Uh, got stuff I need to finish up. I will try to stream as much as possible. Um, I just got to fit it into a workable, feasible schedule. And it, it may just have to be at various times, um, depending on everybody else's schedule at the house. Um, I wish I had a more consistent uh, time. That would be, mm, that would be great for everybody. 
but unfortunately for right now the only person that has a uh, reliable set schedule um, is Jacob in his school. <laughs> so I, I know when he needs to be there and know when he needs to be picked up. So that mic is pretty good. It's picking up all the uh, background. Oh, yeah, this is this is not a horrible one. It just um, doesn't give me the, I guess, the bass and the boom and the voice that, you know, it, it gets a little tinny, I think, at times. AG's in, says hello. Hey, AG, welcome back. Glad you can uh, can make it. <clears throat> Man, I got this. Uh, I need to maybe mute my mic or something and get this uh, frog out of my throat. Let me go ahead and do that. Or I'll do a little show tune or something while I'm while I'm hacking up something. You want less viewers? <laughs> do what? You want less viewers? <laughs> no. All right, hold on one second. Okay, hopefully that in a, uh, which I know is not good, cold water and or hot liquids on the throat. But I will take a little sip of water and hopefully uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't know, is this, has this like coffin stuff been going around the rest of the country, Ron, or? Do you know it just to be kind of, I know Florida's hit kind of hard is something I read. I have no idea. Great. <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. That it's all over. Sure. I, I thought Florida was kind of affected, um, you know, like. Somebody had put something on Facebook, and as you know, you can believe everything that is on Facebook and, and the Internet in general. That, you know, Florida was um, one of the harder hit uh, areas. You know, I was thinking today I, I almost called. I was almost thinking Friday night stream. But then I remembered you're coming over tomorrow. And I don't want to be, uh, you know. Completely tired all day. Yeah. 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 Oh, and remind me tomorrow, Ron, I do have a, uh, I have about three or four over there. One is, uh, like what I'm using now, uh, uh, Kalinsky, uh, Raphael Kalinsky, and the other three are Windsor Newtons, uh, that were used by John Romita. So that's right. You probably would want to pick out one of the Windsor Newtons. And that's that's courtesy of Spencer Beck. So mm -hmm. next time you see him at a show, you can tell him that I I will. I gifted you one and thank him for you know gifting it to you. Yeah. Instead of just throwing it out. Yeah, uh, you know, and I would have thought, you know, Ramita could have maybe tried to even sell those, but I guess he didn't. He had a ton of he had a whole thing of different art supplies, some stuff I would never use, but uh, the brushes I thought were kind of cool that, you know, it's, 
brushes that Ramita actually used. Um, I don't know what the time error was. Now let's see. Ignore that. That's me. Oh. Adding to the list of things. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that's a, did that come through WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah. Are you just going to check your own? Once we get off, I'm going to go up and get the wits end, the drill, the bat comics. All right. Get all that cool. stuff together. So what inkers inspired you the most? Um inkers. I'm sure yeah, no, I'm I'm thinking. As far as ink artist, um boy it it you know, it's deep. Uh just like pencil artist, you know, it's the same. Um of course Joe Sinnott uh was a huge influence. Um even Mike Zek, when he was inking his own stuff back in his days before <clears throat> before he went to Marvel, you know, he all his Charlton stuff, all his uh, uh, just before he turned pro stuff that he inked. Um, I really liked how he was uh, doing certain things. And he had like an inkwash style, but it was actually, um, well, he, I think he used some gray Dr. Martens or uh, a bluish tint Dr. Martens dye for some wash jobs in that Wits End book. You, if it was open, you could see them. But I need to send that out to Kelly, uh, Kelly Jones. I promised it to him. And uh, I was going to give it to him at Heroes Con, but... Uh, he had a little flight delays and couldn't make it out. So got to get that out to my man. Um, so uh, besides, uh, of course, Joe Sennett, um, Al Williamson, Frank Frazetta. Uh, I'm trying to think. Because there's a ton more. Uh, Bob McLeod, of course. Joe Rubenstein. Um, Wally Wood. I think uh, I think Wally Wood has influenced a ton of people. But his approach, as I've heard Mike Zek tell the story, is. Pretty much a, um, and Kevin Nolan, he was an influence. Uh, I think Kevin, I remember Kevin doing uh, some fanzine comics journal and stuff like that. I think that's where Marvel actually noticed him and uh, got him to pencil. I think the first stuff was some Doctor Strange uh, stories that Terry Austin inked. Terry Austin was a, a semi-influence on me. Um, the clean, uh, the clean look type of Terry was was influential. Um, I kind of, I'm still there, but I'm quite a bit more organic in many ways than Terry. Not a slam by any chance, because I I love the Burn Austin uh, X Men stuff. Michael Golden's inking, of course, it's not just his inking; it's his drawing. <clears throat> his inking is just the uh, the gravy on the biscuit. I find that most artists, pencil artists, that I really like can ink their own work uh, extremely well. Some of them, some of them just don't because it's a, uh, you know, they'd rather be doing pencil pages or they don't want to deal with it. Although in today's comics, I find it to be more relevant. Um, 
or it seems to be more prevalent, I guess is a better word. But yeah, the, the inking influences could go on and on and on. Well, real quick, we had uh, HG pop in and say hello. He said he's uh, glad to see you're back at it. AG? Did you H say Green Lantern? Oh, hey. HG. GLHQ? Mm hmm. All right. I think it's a. Uh, yeah. Or eight, not HQ. I was looking at headquarters. HG, okay. Did he have to leave, or he, he just said? Uh, uh, he's gonna have to get to work. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Um, I remind everybody, please, uh, if you're enjoying this, give us a like. It does help. Um, I'm spending a, a lot of time actually watching people on YouTube, like their behind the scenes setup, you know. Uh, this one, this particular setup I have here is kind of dialed in. <clears throat> I'm not sure if more lighting would help or hurt. So I'll kind of go over what I'm, what I'm thinking. I don't know if more lighting, like I could take this and bring it in, but okay, that really didn't help because this light is just a, it's a natural light. Um, I don't want to get it so bright that it blows out and <clears throat> that it blows out the artwork, which can happen. I think, uh, I think we've experienced that on my channel before where I had to shut some lighting off because it was too bright. I think I tried something like that. I don't know if it was recorded and we, or if it was a, but anyway, back to, um, so lighting, very important. And, and <laughs> yes, sir. I'm ready to talk today. Um, lighting, very important, important. Don't know why I want to keep saying it. Importing, um, sound, uh, I've heard a lot of YouTube creators mention that sound is even more important than image. Now, for them, when it's just a talking head, I, maybe they have a point there. With me doing art, and that's more the focus, I might contest that a bit and say, you know what? Um, I, I get that a combination of it would would be important, but I'm not sure that because uh, some people will do a piece of art, no sound, you know, no no interaction, nothing, just just doing the work. And some people will do a time lapse, like you know, which is cool. Although I kind of don't mind myself watching the entire process just to see how people figure out problems or, you know, how they get certain effects. In fact, that, you know, now that I mentioned that, Ron, I, I had a little time yesterday and I was on my uh, laptop and I pulled up that video of Mateo working on your storm again and was watching that. Skipping around a little bit because I've seen it about three or four times, but very interesting stuff still. That guy's just knocking everything out of the park that he does lately. Ron muted on me, and I don't know because I'm not looking. So <laughs> I think he's still here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So you say, Mateo, uh, any other new inker slash artists that you're <clears throat> video wise, uh, uh, art wise. Well, what was the question? I kind of walked over you there. Sorry. Oh, well, we talked about some of your older influences. Uh, how about any newer guys like Mateo you just brought up that you're 
Um, well, like I said, I, I, I am a fan of Sean Gordon Murphy. I think he's got, uh, you know, very good skills all around. Drawing, inking, uh, compositions. Trying to think of anyone else. I do feel today it seems uh, depending dependent depending upon the artist. Um, I I don't think today's editors, and I, I this is just purely a guess, but just looking through some of the books, and it, it kind of goes back into the '90s when storytelling became. Uh, less important and big splash panels and multiple splash pages per issue became the popular thing and you know there, there's certain instances where it works but when you do it over and over and over it I don't know it deadens the effect of of that great shot and an issue to me at least. So I was listening to some uh, talk on sequential art and they were talking mm -hmm. about uh, the smaller panels slowing down the story and uh, the big splash pages speed it up. Right. Uh, do you think that had anything to do with their planning of that? They're just trying to get through uh, a lot of books, putting them out weekly. Well, uh, I think it was a, you know, I, I, I believe it was the guys that broke off and, you know, went and formed image that they were the ones that basically started doing it. And, um, then I think, you know, other artists felt like that was the formula to become popular. You know, it, it it was it became less about the art serving the story and just about to me, at least, you know, it felt like it was. More about drawing a cool image, you know. So if the image had really nothing to do with the story, but hey, you know, it's like. I'm doing this cool image. Uh, with no pun intended on image comics. Image Comics at the time, you know, their image now puts out, a, a, you know, a whole source of different looking comics and stuff. So good for that, but still pops up where the storytelling, uh, the panel progression and stuff is thrown to the wayside. And that's based on the little bit of comics that I get to see, that I get to thumb through. And when I do that and I see it, I it kind of, you know, I'll be like, wow, you know, this guy's really a good artist, but and I don't don't ask me to name names because not that I would be embarrassed to, but I just can't think of anybody right now that, you know, it's usually it's usually something like I'm at a show and somebody will have a bunch of trades or something. I'll have a few minutes. I'll walk around and I'll thumb through some trade paperbacks and I'll just, you know, kind of see what's out there and uh, not really pick anything up because, like I said, it, it's not going to it's not going to be of any service to me. Um, let's see. I am actually looking for. And I think it's over on my other desk, so I'm gonna have to walk over there and get it. my steel ruler to kind of help me with these lines a little bit. Give me a couple seconds.
lit Thanos from it's gonna, when the blacks come in it's going to punch these whites out and look pretty fantastic and then when I get a chance to do the splatter uh, I'll post that on Twitter because like I said I got to bring probably going to do that tomorrow Ron hey maybe we'll do a quick uh splatter video Ron maybe I'll wait uh, and uh, we can get that film <laughs> do a little mini film and load it up to YouTube all right it'll be a splatter movie all right so is our is our viewer still uh, staying steady uh, not a lot of comments. No, seven. but I mean the viewers. Still, still, how many we got? Seven. Okay, because you know, I gotta admit, Tuesday the peak viewers was seventeen. That that actually shocked me in a nice way. I was surprised to see uh. Surprised to see that many people on a Tuesday join in and hang around. So also, Ron, I've been thinking. Same thing. Uh, I do this almost every year. Uh, last year I was... Um, pretty much uh, using my daily drawings to do it until convention season started. Whoa. Not me. No, I knew. <laughs> I got a new follower. Uh, thanks, Shannon, if you're out there watching. New, new Twitter follower. So as I was saying, at, at the beginning of every year, I kind of like to go back and study head construction and, you know, just kind of keep myself honest. Because uh, in doing comic books, we fall into shortcuts and... Uh, which are kind of needed in a sense for quicker drawing, but I also like to keep things as solid as I can. So I will be starting doing that head study again and figure drawing so that I feel more confident in, uh, in, my work in general. I hope the yard sale artist likes that we shouted him out because I was just going to say, you know, I got I to gotta get that yard sale artist confidence back. I'm sure he appreciates the plug. <laughs> I got to shout him out, you know. A good guy. Yeah, he is, and I got to keep him honest. Got got to make sure he's tuning in. Hopefully, 
to my streams as I tune in to his uh, long box crusade. Now, I, I have to admit. Was that a was that a long pregnant pause or what? Um, I'm waiting. Yeah, I know. I have to admit. I'm I'm a bit surprised he hasn't started his own yard sale artist live stream of just him with his art, like what I'm doing. You know, don't you think? Uh, I he thought he would have projects. Well, that's true. Maybe maybe he's too booked up. But I, I would have just thought that a um you know a yard sale artist, maybe get his brother to be a co host or something, you know, so he can work. Um I thought that would have been like a natural thing for him. Never mentioned it to him because I thought it would be coming. I thought he would be like, huh, what do I need these guys for? I think he's just waiting for an invite to the uh, Big Beatty show here. <laughs> Another Friday night uh, session. And then during that show, he'll announce his own stream. That would work, right? It would. I would actually... And I've told him about this. I would actually like to see him out yard sailing, you know, like taking video of of him and the lovely Miss Yard Sale artist. I don't know if she goes, though. Yeah, I think she does, doesn't she? I don't know. I, I can't remember if he said that she likes to go or that he forces her at gunpoint or... <clears throat> I mean, um, that he, <laughs> oh, Jared, where, where, let's see, dun, 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 dun. that's going to be close. We'll get a, a little, um, no curvature going here just to keep me a bit honest. Just a little bit here. Mostly on the top. All right. That may be about all I need. I know. I don't seem like a lot, does it? It's not. And I see David. Uh, Genome Presents has entered the room. Good afternoon, David. Good to see you. Uh, we need to talk about, I'm going to do an interview for David on his show. I need to contact him next week. Got another guy uh, that I'm going to do an interview with and then the Longbox Crusade has once again said that uh, they, their people would reach out to me. Now, I assume that's going to be his lawyers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You read my mind. The Longbox Legal Team. <laughs> that's a good name, Longbox Legal Team. So what, what my streams are lacking is comments after the fact. It's uh, people aren't leaving comments. I'm going to have to, actually, I do have a few things that, uh, that I have ready as giveaways, but not yet. Um, I haven't even told you about those, Ron. It's not artwork, it's books, but it's interesting. Um, 
At least I think it is. I'll just I'll just leave that hanging for a while. Okay. It's it's interesting. I don't know if you picked up on it, Ron, when you were watching Mateo do your storm, but you know, you know he's gonna do a lot of black area. You don't have to really concern yourself with these outer edges. You don't have to be so picky with them, um, which is a good thing. But what you have to be careful on is the inner edge. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter here what I do on the outside because I know it's going to be all black. But where it's inside, that's where, that's where it all counts. Now, when I was working on... <clears throat> Captain America. I had my sister, aka Kidney Lady, sometimes fill in blacks for me. And uh, sometimes she would cut it a little close, like she would go into a white area, like, you know, boom, 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 like a bump or two in there. And I would tell her, hey, you know, if you need to take a rapidograph out, which I was using at the time for uh, ruling some lines. I said, do it, and then take the brush and fill it in. Now, she was a very good, to her credit, she was a very good um, uh, painter. They had that, uh, I think it was like, it was called the one-stroke technique, and you would load your brush up with a few different colors, and in one stroke, they would blend, and you'd make like the leaf of a, like a, well, you'd make a leaf of a flower or something. She was extremely talented at that and very very good um so uh you know i thought she'd be good at filling in blacks which to a degree she was um but she would sometimes hit that area where it would she would lose the drawing because she would go too far into the white area inside so i had to just you know remind her not to go into those areas because when she did, you know, it was taken away from the drawing. Just a little aside, a little story from the past. But yeah, so it's interesting when Mateo brings out that big mop brush to fill in the blacks of the background and to scrub some texture type stuff in. It does make it look effortless. Yes. So Jacob had this stuff, and of course, you know, with a kid, a, a day or two, he plays with it. I don't know if you've heard of it. I had never heard of it. It's called kinetic sand. Yeah, I think I've heard of that before. And it's, what is it like? It's almost like um, slime, but it's in a sand form. So it's kind of, it's got a weird texture to it, like, you know, like sand, but it's, it'll drip. And on his TikTok channel, <laughs> Felipe12, I have no idea. You know, I, I just let, I just let him create. Um, <laughs> like I said, I have no idea about the name. <laughs> it's like, okay, you want to be Felipe A12, then, you know, maybe there's, and it's like spelled, the E on the end is like six E's or something. Uh, he, it's really funny. He did this video and I think it, I don't think it was a voiceover, but I think he did like, uh, 
um, you can do the, the text over the video. But when he was showing it to me, it was really funny because I, I like the way my, my seven year old son uses vocabulary in a good way. And it's like, you know, something I would never expect, but so he was showing it to me. He, he, he got it out of the, it comes like, in, it's, it's really weird. These little plastic looking stone structures and then it, you know, it'll ooze out or you can spoon it out or whatever. And, uh, so I saw it and I said, Oh, what's that Jacob? And he's like, Oh, this is kinetic sand. I said, wow, that looks pretty cool. And he goes, look, daddy. And he like, he picked up a glob of it and like was doing this with his hand, you know, like letting the sand ooze through and stuff. And then he goes, this is very satisfying. <laughs> it, was like, it was like he was eating a, a good meal or something. It was like satisfying or something. But just the fact that he, you know, the sensation was very satisfying. It just, it was fun. So, uh, genome, that's David, right? Yeah. All right. So he says he's used that technique a few times in Bob Ross style paintings, browns on one side of the brush and whites on the other to simulate the sunny reflective side of a tree trunk. Oh, uh, loading up the paint on like a few different colors and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, like I said, that my sister was really good at it. I mean, she was like pro. Uh, I don't know if she taught classes. I know she went to classes to learn it. I think and I'm trying to remember if, you know, um, but, you know, she eventually got away from it. Uh, but, you know, I got to admit she was um, she was quite, quite good at it. And yeah, it, it was amazing, you know, that you load this brush up. Well, just like, you know, it's still, people still do it today in paintings uh, and stuff. You know, if they want that type of effect, you can, you can pull it off. Okay, now I'm just going to show kind of the shoulder, uh, a little bit of the shoulder deals here on Thanos, so. going to bring a side in here. I have these lightly penciled. Don't know if they're picking up on the video feed or not. But they will now. And then, let's see. So David also thinks that uh, kinetic sand would be favored by Gambit. Hmm. I have no idea why, because <laughs> I, I don't know that much about that. And I and I see David just moved on me in chess. We're we've had a few online games and we're we're knotted up in two right now. I I don't know who's winning or losing right now. Can't tell. I think he's got me in one. I, I think he's got me on one game. The other game, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. But then I never am until the end. Just like you, Ron, when you had me blunder when you when you once. No, man, that was perfect. Because I, I wasn't even thinking about that. And I'm just moving around and getting extra pieces I don't really need. And that's 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 what killed me, is getting all those pieces that suddenly were covering all these spots. And the next thing I know, you've got me in a stalemate and cost me about 30-something points. Maybe 40. Okay, so... Let's see how it looks on camera. Okay. Pretty interesting here. Oh, you can win, David. I'm believe me, I am not that good. I am not that good. I got lucky <clears throat> a couple times. 
What's your chest rating? Mine? Uh-huh. Well, it should, like I said, it should probably only be around a 900. But for some reason, I went on that 21-game winning streak where people were just literally, they would stop playing or... I would I would luck into getting their queen and they would quit. Now there were a few that I did win, which I didn't think I was going to win, which really surprised me, which gave me a boost of confidence. And I kept thinking, and then you know, finally I I, I knew it couldn't last. But I, I really think there's some sort of algorithm, and you know I've lost a few games. Uh, where internet connection goes out or something, mostly at home, where I think we're zapping our our limit with the devices. Um, but right now, I think it's it's under thirteen hundred. It's twelve something. But I I tell you what, I do like to go back and review the games and see like what the what the the engine says the better move would have been and man i've noticed a lot of usually i play like a quick 10 minute game which is not that quick but uh david and i are playing the ones that you know the three day ones where you can really study the board a bit Mm -hmm. sometimes i don't take as much time as those as i should either But it's grueling when you're going to move a piece just one square. And then you got to wait for the guy to move. You know, it's like two hours later, you can move again. You know, it's like, and then you're going to move another square or something. It's, got, it's like one of those deals where you, you wish it was alive. Because then it, like we did that night, Ron, when we played those games. Well, I think David is open to uh, bribery. Open to bribery. <laughs> bribery. <laughs> no, he's act, he he's he's a better player than me, I guarantee it. I think he's letting me win. Although there was one game I saw an opening. I don't see those as maybe that's why they're grandmasters. Those those guys it's like they're thinking, you know, 20 moves ahead it seems like they they don't leave a piece hanging at all. I leave pieces hanging all the time. Or <clears throat> I'm so busy about losing my queen, or I'm so busy thinking about losing my queen on a certain move that, you know, there's something right in front of me, like a nice check where they would have to move and I would get a piece and my queen would be safe that I make that move quickly. And then as soon as I release it, it's like I see it bright as day. Uh, what you gonna do? What uh, you gonna do? He uh, is open to doing a live game sometime. Oh yeah, no, I. I <clears throat> there's a little um, there's a little green square when you're live online, and I told him before if he ever wants to, if he sees me on there, challenge me to like a you know online game. I would actually prefer that. And if I can, I would accept it, you know, if I got time. If not, I would I would just say, leave him a message and say maybe later. Okay. So we're from the backstage of uh, StreamYard. I see we have eight viewers. I don't know if that's what you can see on YouTube, Ron. Same. Okay. Yeah, I see David says uh, wants to play some actually on a board. Now, that's something I have not done in probably 20, 30. Yeah, probably 30 years is play on an actual board. I don't think I could do that anymore. Now that I'm used to that flat screen. Now, I have had mouse slips and stuff, and that really sucks. <laughs> For 
lack of a better uh, term, because I've been, you know, now he did, he, I got it, he did do a move on me, and it was probably the smart thing. <clears throat> I offered him an exchange of queens, but I think I would have actually came out uh, one extra piece ahead, so he didn't exchange the queen. Most of the time I find that people take it, but he didn't. And I guess he sat there and counted, you know, I take, he takes back and forth and said, John's going to have an extra, extra piece out of this. So, and not just a pawn, but something else, put him in a bad place. So he actually thought it through. That's on the 10 minute games where you're a little bit more rushed that you may not, uh, you may not think to do that. All right. Let's see what some nice blacks are going to do here. And I do need to go back in here and do something with this, which I, I am. I just got to get the flat brush out. But just for the sake of the stream, going to get some. This is not quite as big as the mop of. This is not the mop that uh, Mateo had. <laughs> I think Mateo had one about four times this size at least. It was but he was also, mop. huh? It was a literal mop. Yeah. He took it from the but, janitor. I watched. But, yeah, but he was working a, a lot bigger. Well, I remember when you know, when you came over and, and I said, well, what did he do the, the backgrounds with, you know? And you said a mop. I know I keep saying this, but I got to uh, find a program to speed that video up. <laughs> I've not done it once. Um. Hey, David says uh, it's been about the same amount of time since you've played chess, since you've signed his cap to 89. <laughs> well, I'm guessing I was. I was probably in my mid 20s. Mid to later 20s, maybe 28 at the oldest. So, yeah, 30, 25, 30 years, somewhere around there. It, it would be a whole different looking perspective. It's, it's like nowadays when I scan art in and I'm looking at it flat on the monitor, I can see a lot of errors that I don't see working on, uh, working on it on the board. Well, not a lot, but you see the major ones stick out. If I saw a lot, I would just, uh, I'd give up. Yeah, he thinks it was around 89 or 90, maybe earlier. Okay. Yeah, that would that would be about right. That sounds about right to me. I was playing this old guy that was probably rated if I had to guess now looking at some of the people I've played online. He would have probably been a good solid like 1500 <laughs> or maybe more. I have no idea. I just know he, you know, he could sit down and, and you know, if I got his queen, it would be uh, an error on his part that I would 
actually not even see and I would just luck into and uh, that that alone felt like a victory if I could just get his queen he would even you know he would spot me his queen and just mop the floor which is not saying much because back then I still just like now I'm um, really it was just this past year that I put a little more effort into it and boy I'll tell you I I got blistered quite a few times but a little feature that if you pay the, I don't know, 25 or 30 bucks a month for unlimited going back and looking at your chess moves. And it's not that I spend that much time looking at them, but I do like to run through almost every game and find out, you know, where a mistake was. I, I don't do many blunders anymore. I have noticed that. I've gotten better at those. Usually if I hit a blunder, it's a mouse slip or something like that, but um, just out and out blundering, that's kind of stopped, which, okay, so that's improvement. But I had to at least get a game to play instead of just playing uh, Yahtzee or poker online for fun and then fall down that rabbit hole. So at least chess, I feel, is a more, um, a bit more of a game that's going to, you know, it's it's a strategic game. So I think it it does help uh, help in many areas, you know, in thinking about things, thinking in advance, um, you know, thinking. Stuff like, well, you know, if I make this move or if I do this, what is it going to cost me? Is that deep run or what? Uh, psych yeah. psych psycho chess. Psycho chess. So I like the idea of kind of leaving this, you know, you, are you bringing your camera tomorrow? I can. I was going to say, maybe we could film the splatter thing. I don't know if we actually need that, but we could try it out. But then does your camera have Wi-Fi? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's got Bluetooth. Whoa. There's my leaning too hard on the back of this. Uh, Mike Cross is in. This is hey, Mike drawing. Cross. Another drawing of Zablo. Yeah. <laughs> Relentless, that Mike Cross. Let's ask Mike Cross. Is he is he going to be at Heroes Con in 2020? Wasn't that the one he said he was going to go to? Yeah, this year was last Disney. year was Disney. Disney. Yeah, this year it's his year. Last year it was all about the family. And when he answers that, I have a follow-up. If he answers it. No, 2020 is out. Ooh. As of here, our Disney trip is in August. What? What yeah. did he... Can you reread that, Ron? Yeah, that's what he said. Uh, 2020 is out. This year, the Disney trip's in August. I thought he was going to Disney last year. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Cross, didn't you go? I thought it was all about. I wonder. Uh oh, he got sucked into Disney Anna. You know, now now it's like, oh, he wants to go to Disney. Oh, I was hoping to beg him to bring some uh, Canadian maple syrup. 
down to Charlotte. <laughs> Some Sasquatch. Sas, Sasquatch. No. I can't say it now. Nova Some, Scotia. Some Saskatchewan's best. Uh, he, he was saving the last two years to do a Disney this year. That's not what he said. I it's swear. Changed. I, I I think they got into the uh, Disney on a, or whatever they call it. Those people that live for Disney. Like, you know. No, I, I don't. Well, you, you're not familiar with them. Uh -uh. They literally, I mean, Disney is their life. You know, they take multiple trips. Of course, Mike couldn't. I get that. But, well, he could, but not realistically. And, you know, it's like everything. It's all about Disney. It's all about the magic. Which, believe me, I got no problem with Disney. But, truthfully, for, for since I've experienced it, it's it's boring. <laughs> now, I, I haven't been there in a while. Could have, you know. I know it's 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 for the kids, for some people. Just like funny books, you know, we have our own jam. So, you know, if Mike Crosses went over to the, you'll like this run, the uh, <clears throat> dark side. Um, and, you know, is more into Disney than comics now, then, well, that's, you know, that's his business. I get it. That's his Canadian business. Hey, he said, regardless of what I said, my family says save up for two years. Said what? He said, regardless of what I said, my family says save up for two years for us to go. You know what, Ron? Ron? Yep. Hold on a minute. Ron? Yeah. I'm not even hearing you through my headset. Hold on a minute. Remember when you told me to... Hold on, I'm going to turn down my sound. Now, say something, Ron. Hey. Don't hear you. I do no. not hear you through my headset. Okay. Now, that's pretty funny. Have you been on the front end of YouTube? The front end of YouTube? Well, you know, like you're watching it as a viewer? Yeah. Do you have the volume turned, or do you have it muted? Yeah. And you can hear me through your headset. Yes. I don't need this headset apparently then. This is odd. I, I just realized I'm hearing you through my computer. But how come it's not getting. You know what I'm saying? No. All right. Let me. OK. I, I have here. Okay, so I have that on, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not hearing you through it. I'm hearing you through my laptop. Cool. <laughs> okay, but it's not cool because if I don't need it, let me see something. Well, David says he can hear me. Yeah, no, I can hear you, but let me let me let me try this. I told you <clears throat> all about uh, some stories. I'm gonna plug in. All right, this is just gonna take a second because I'm gonna plug in my blue yeti. Okay. Now my blue yeti is on. Oh, wait, let me take the headset out. Can you hear me now, Ron? Yes. I can hear you. No, you can't. Yes, I can.
Can you hear me now, Ron? Still can hear you. Okay, can you hear me now, Ron? Still can hear you. Can you hear me now, Ron? Yep. Okay, wait. Now I could hear you through my headset. Okay, you can hear me now? Yes. And now... I am hearing you through what I should have been hearing you through all this time. All right. Very weird. Because I, when I plugged in the Yeti microphone, apparently you could not hear me, right? Only to the times I responded. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So interesting. I don't know... I, I've never had, you know, used to, that's why we'd have to wear the headset and the microphone because it would bleed over and you'd get that, uh, mm -hmm. infinite echo. But now this time it, it, it didn't do that. I was hearing you through my laptop speakers and it wasn't picking up on my microphone and echoing back to you or back to the audience either. Huh. Well, something needs troubleshooting. Well, Mike says, leave it to him to cause more problems for you. <laughs> and Kaz just got in the room. Hey, Dr. Kaz. Good afternoon. Glad to see you, so to speak. And hope your day has been well. See, that's one thing. I got a short, uh, kind of a short cord on this uh, headset. It's not like the other one that I crunched when I step on it, when I stepped on it, which had a probably one that was a bit too long. That's weird that all this time, and it just occurred to me, Ron, that I'm hearing you through my laptop. It, I'm like, wait a minute, this thing on my ear isn't doing anything. So there's nothing quite like seeing somebody fill in all these blacks, right? Kind of. Actually, some people say it is very therapeutic. Relaxing. Okay. Now. Uh, let's see. I know this is going to get into some just dark black. I'm going to leave some highlight on his shoulder pieces here. It's Kaz Friday. It used to be Kaz Friday, right? When I did the Fridays, it was, uh, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, and Dr. Kaz can tell me, it was like sometimes it was a, a Dr. Kaz Friday. I think he had a name for every day, too, or something. <clears throat> Not just for my stream, but I'm, I mean for in general. You know, he always had like a nice little greeting.
Well, David comes from the inking, and he stays for your zen-like amusement. <laughs> well, thank you, David. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, at least do that on our interview for your show. I don't think I'll be drawing. I think I'll be sitting at my second streaming station, which will be a desk and a bookcase backdrop behind me with some little accoutrements, which will... Ooh, you gonna bring? Did you did you get that book, Ron? <clears throat> which which one? The one you you know the one you I don't want to give it away. The one you you know the one you won um, for display. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Did you want to bring that, and we can put it in the bookcase? Yeah, I just got to add it to the list. <laughs> I'll expect a text in a second or two, right? I hope so. I mean, if you don't want to bring it, that's fine too. I'm just saying, it. You know, there's a there's a square or two there we could put it in. It'd be kind of interesting. Kaz says he loves it. Doctor Kaz Friday. David says he thinks a studio backdrop would be a perfect setting. And Mike says you should be whipping yard sale artists <laughs> getting interviewed. I should be whipping? Whipping them, flogging. Uh, I know, but uh, <clears throat> I don't quite know what he means. Well, let me read the comment. Maybe I'll, I'll get a little different context, or maybe he's just being a... This, Oh, okay. I get it. But that would require Jared to be here. I think. I, I don't know how it's like it whip him. Whip it good. <laughs> That's me. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I forgot something still, though. I do too, and I can't remember what. But when you get halfway here, it'll hit you like a ton of bricks. Mm David says that you will be breaking yard sale artists' <clears throat> thumbs for horning in on his territory, like what happened to <laughs> Newman in the Color of Money. <laughs> Davis Comic Finds just came in the room, says hello. Howdy, y'all. Hey, David. I believe this is your first time uh, either in the chat or Davis. just who? Davis. Yeah, uh, I see that. Davis Comic finds i think this is his first time i've seen him uh in my in my room so welcome thank you for joining um we're kind of getting close to a wrap up because i'm gonna do the white splatter effect on a video tomorrow which may or may not be live haven't decided yet Probably not live. I think we want to try a different camera out. Although some of the best moments are things like live stuff gone wrong, right? Right, Ron? Oh, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> oh, great. That reassures me. Yeah, like uh, you'll say we're recording and then we're really not, right? Correct. You'll be like, oh, uh, I'll say like, okay, where's the video, Ron? Let's look at it, and you'll be like, let's let, let me find it, and then I'll be like, it's not there. Oh, I forgot to hit record. Do it all again. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be the drawing all over again, just to get to the uh, the splatter movie. All right, uh, let's see how much ink is. I don't want a lot, but. That might work. Now, back the U. 
smoother way. See, David knows the uh, calming effect of, number one, my voice, especially when it's coming across that new microphone, and the zen-like uh, of, of watching the craftsmanship. Right? Correct. Yeah. Hey, Davis says he purchased the Batman commission online from you a month or so ago. Mm, month or so ago? Oh, well, it was one of the little six by eight drawings. I'm assuming. Was it a, was it already done? And uh, formerly Rod Line came in and he says, excuse me, but please allow a moment of fanboying. Sure. Hey, how you doing, formerly? Uh, hey, if you new guys aren't subscribed, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be streaming more often, just like last year. And I, I'm going to try to not back up so many conventions so I can continue to stream and not lose my mind. I've got some ideas, so I just have to get them implemented and in place. And if you like the video, don't forget, hit that like button for me, please. I do appreciate all of them. And even if you don't, that's cool too. You're here. So Davis is Dustin Davis from Twitter. Oh, got it. And he grabbed one of the commissions on the site. Okay. Yep. Remember the name. Now, well, David says, in all seriousness, I've said in the past that showing artwork being done with narration is very relaxing and therapeutic. Yeah. Try no. Being it, anxious or angry watching Bob Ross. <laughs> well, it's true. And that's, you know, he had mentioned in a comment he left for me about the Bob Ross. And I think, I really think that's why Bob Ross was partially successful is, you know, you, you put him on doing a painting and he's got a nice calm voice, even though we get a little rowdy here sometimes, but that's because Bob didn't have anyone else with him. Uh, on any of the streams, correct? It was just him talking to the camera. <clears throat> so, yeah, I get that. I totally, uh, totally agree. You know, and it's like uh, there were no mistakes, happy accidents, and um, I totally, uh, totally feel that. Now, Mike would like you to sing something. Well, you know, with YouTube's copyright and stuff and this new FTC thing, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into that because no, I don't want to copy that. You huh? think his narration is relaxing. Wait until you well, wait oh. until start singing. Well, that's more Zablo. Now, Zablo will get that uh, electrifying... Okay, so let me take a look at this. It's a very, uh, a very dramatically lit Thanos, I would say. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do like uh, um, two layers of splatter. One would be the first layer over his face, just to get a little. Um, and then the second would be background. So it's more uh, of a star type field, galaxies, maybe. Um, I'm actually, <clears throat> and this was my plan. I gotta see if it's gonna work for his, uh, 
instead of using black on the, um, I guess you, I, I don't know, it's not his goggles, but whatever his metal parts are, I'm going to use like a dark, a darker ink wash. That's why they're so stark white right now. So I'm going to put the shine in with a uh, tone. Oh, quit, quit sliding. I didn't want to tape it right in the middle of a very wet black area, but I didn't want to fold that piece of tape back yet. So let's see. You're about to drop. Huh? You're about to drop. <laughs> drop it. All right. Superpower reviews in says, "Hey John." Hey, Superpower, welcome. Are you new to the stream? I will mention again uh, that the you new people that I see coming in, um, if you haven't subscribed already, do me a favor. If you if you like my work, if you like my streams. Please subscribe and uh, give this video a like. It does help me. Trying to not new, not. Oh, okay. Big fan. Well, but I mean, if he's new to the channel, I'm not sure. You know, um, if he's already subscribed or not. My goal this year, twenty. Well, to reach two point five k subscribers. That's going to be a little bit hard. Not unattainable though. Stretch goal is to double it to five. So let's let's work on that. All right, so I need to know if the water I've been using is going to be okay for an ink wash or do I? Mm, yeah, well, it's not bad. Do I need to make it a little darker? Hmm. It's always the question. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at it, going, trying to, I think I'll start with it. Let's see what. See what we get. Looks like it's going to be a bit light. So, formerly Rod Line says, Do the big companies care when you sell art of their characters? It's crazy. Print on demand places won't print anything copyrighted, but go on Etsy and there are a ton of copywritten images. Copyright written. I don't know. I, I, you know, um, do they care? I think if they cared, there would have been, you know, something done by now. Um, cause it's all over conventions. And as far as uh, places online, yeah, I get it. They have to protect themselves. I haven't really used any place online. Um, I have a local printer here and they know what I do. And the uh, first time I brought stuff in, I, you know, the guy kind of questioned me and I told him, I said, well, here's what I do. And <clears throat> I said, if anything happens there, you know, they're going to come after me first. They'll tell me to cease and desist. I said, as far as I know. But I do know that there are those places. I can't, you know, maybe Etsy has their own print on demand. And if you load an image up, you can buy a print and they fulfill it. I think there's actually, I can't remember the, 
the name of the online place that that's what they specialize in is, you know, it may be called just prints.com or something. You can actually, you know, I think have a store there with them or use them to link over. It's kind of one of those, you know, I hate to say it's a gray area because it's not, it is illegal. But since Marvel, owned by Disney, hasn't done anything yet, it's like, well, I I was going to say, I know like the first time, I'm trying to remember what it was. I, I, I brought something in. This was when I lived in Orlando. So this was in the 90s. I brought something in that I needed to print. Um, and I can't remember what it was, but I needed to print it. I think my printer at the time may have been a blue line something. I was going to have Kinko's do a printout. And it was, I was going to ink over it. And it was Marvel characters. And I think it was for somebody that was having different inkers ink it. And they pushed back on me first, not wanting to do it. Because... You know, I wasn't the copyright holder. And, you know, I explained to him, I got a hold of the manager and not literally, but I think I remember getting a hold of the manager and telling him, hey, you know, this shouldn't be a problem. And it kind of was. I don't, I don't even think I remember getting it done there. Um, I think I had to go someplace else. Uh, and they did it without even questioning it. But I did find out why Kinko's used to be, which is now FedEx office. Um, Kinko's had apparently, and I think this might still be online. Uh, apparently they had uh, printed off some of Hallmark's cards for somebody. <clears throat> and that person then sold them. And Hallmark found out about it and was not happy with it and hit Kinko's with a hefty lawsuit, which I think was settled out of court, maybe. Which may have been smart on Kinko's. Oh. Uh, I'm going to have to mute myself for one second. Okay, I'm back. Welcome. That was not Anne. That was actually my mother. So her medicine that she needs is is ready. The pharmacy called her and said, pick it up. Pick it up. So she was just letting me know that. Wow. Did you hear that? Yeah. Someone running by outside? Oh, I'm hearing a lot. I heard a dog. I heard the people talking. Probably yeah, you know what? Place. That that dog thing is weird. I've I've heard a dog here a, a couple of times, and I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't think animals were supposed to be in the building. Mm -hmm. Hey, so Mike wanted to know how far from Disney you were. I told him about 90 minutes. Yeah, that's about right. <clears throat> He's going to tell the family, yeah, I'll be in in 10 or 15 minutes, and he's going to come over and visit. There's yeah, the there's the dog and the kid again. Yeah. That's, yep. that's pretty weird. Well, unless it's a service dog, then... Service dogs don't bark. You're right.
You are absolutely right, Ron. You're supposed to say, I know I'm right. <laughs> oh, formerly Rod Line says, I did a digital painting of Sinatra based on a photo. I got an email from the photographer's estate within a week telling me to remove it, which I did. It was just for fun, <laughs> not for sale. Really? Yeah. Wow. You know, that, that reminds me. That reminds me, Ron, of, of somebody using photographs to, wow, let's see. Wow. So you just had it up there for, um, just for an example of what you could do, perhaps that's. Well, I guess I, I better, I, let's see. Okay, it was the photographer's estate, not even Sinatra. Well, not his estate, so. Interesting. Makes you wonder how they, you know, I mean, how they found it in a, enough to be like, hey, remove that. From what I understand, if you do something for educational purposes, you you have a lot more leeway. Um, so if that was just for your own, you know, fun, which is apparently you said it's not for sale. I'm not saying to fight it because I know that could get expensive and, you know, you could lose for some stupid reason. You know, but if you're just doing your own personal work and you, Hey, I'm going to use this photograph cause it's really, you know, it's really nice and it's got some good shades on it that I need to, you know, shadows or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's well, I would have, I would have followed suit and just did probably what you did. Take it down and then take it down and then maybe write them back and say, you know, just curious, uh, you know, or maybe try to talk to somebody that knows a little more, even, even maybe Google it and just see what the, what the deal with that is. Cause it seems, it does seem very picky. I'll be honest with you. I was telling Ron, um, the Obama poster that Shepard Ferry uh, did, which he was actually selling, I think, or maybe he was giving it away at first or something. The AP people came after him, and he at first, at first claimed he didn't use the photo, and then he came back and said he did when... When the dust settled, Obama, I think, authorized its use, and I think everybody got happy because there was more money to be made in it. So, who knows? Uh, it's it's a mystery what gets singled out and what gets through. All right, I need a little bit more dark gray. So that I am going to have to make a little bit of black in here, a little water. the uh, former Lee's follow-up. Here's a crazy part. I saw my painting on a CD cover on iTunes. I wound up telling the estate about that one. So the Sinatra cover, that, or the Sinatra painting, is that you're referring to that? Because if that's the case, then that's probably why the estate 
found out about it. That's my uneducated but probably on target guess. Kind of educated. I would, no, I'm, I'm going to put that out there. Kind of an educated guess. But only for the fact that, yeah, iTunes would definitely draw more attention to it. I would, I would guess somebody that knew the photographer or his estate probably saw it. And instead of going after the people that took it from you, maybe, oh, maybe both of you got a, a whatever, cease and desist. Sorry, I had to step away. Sorry. Uh, formerly added a little context, and I read that, which is kind of interesting. I think it being on iTunes being used for a album cover would definitely alert the estate, or somebody saw it and alerted the estate. But So have you answered superpower review? Do you have a character that you absolutely love drawing? Uh, well, my favorite character is Captain America. I always enjoy drawing Cap. And Batman is another one. That's probably my two favorite characters to draw for different reasons. Like I said, Cap is just my all-time favorite character. I love his suit. Batman I like because... Uh, I really feel DC lets the artists interpret a lot on him um, suit wise. So you can kind of experiment a little bit with him and they don't seem to care. Now that's changed quite a bit, you know, back in, back in the day, they, you know, I think they were a little more strict, but lately, and even when I was doing Batman with uh, Doug Minch writing and Kelly Jones, uh, you still had that little bit of, you know, wiggle room to experiment with Batman. I think DC's always kind of been a little lenient on <clears throat> whether you get Batman pouches on his belt or the pods, you know, it's, it's nothing hard and fast. Well, Mike Cross said that you love to draw Galactus. <laughs> I've done a few. He's, you know, what's interesting is even Kirby didn't keep Galactus consistent. So, so David says he knows that you can't play music while you are streaming, but do you normally listen to something while you're working, like the immortal words of Depeche Mode? Enjoy the silence. I usually, um, I'll listen to a, another YouTube video or something. Uh, sometimes I do listen to music. Uh, I like talk radio. Um, actually, I'm looking at uh, if I do some other streaming, I'm, I'm looking into this paid service from Epidemic Sound. And they have... Uh, they have music that is YouTube, uh, you know, it's basically original music that people do. And so it's when you buy the subscription, um, you're allowed to use it. All right. Now, Superpower Review wants to know if you'd ever be interested in doing his show. Oh, yeah, sure. What, uh, what do you mostly... Um, What's your, is it, is it comics or is it, um, pop culture? What's your, your, what's your main goal with your show? 
while we wait for him to reply, formerly Rod Line says, what have you thought of the movie costumes of Cap? The movie costumes? Yeah. Forgot um, yeah, I, you know what? For movie costumes, they're fine. Um, I still prefer Kirby's very simplistic for the comic book. I know they've kind of crossed paths in a way. Um, it's hard to draw. I did it once for my, uh, cause I met him now. So he's kind of an online bud for, uh, now I'm going to blank out on his name, but he's also an artist and I met him before. Uh, nice guy. Uh, Jared and him actually swapped drawings. And uh, so, you know, it's there's a reason costumes are designed the way they are for monthly comics, and that's for expediency. So when you when you introduce something that's a little more involved, that's when like Iron Man, I would never I would never want to do that monthly <laughs> to Ron Shigerin. David says Levins did his favorite cap in a pyro, his favorite Batman. Now that's cool. I liked a pyro. Liked him a lot. Well, an important question is big ear or small ear Batman? Um I like both. Uh of course I'm kind of known for working with Kelly on Batman, except for the jobs people forget, which are the first five issues of Legends of the Dark Knight, um, which, if I remember correctly, uh, Ed Hannigan used a smaller-eared Batman. So I, I really like both approaches. Um, I've done both in, in my own sketches. Usually when someone at a convention comes up to me, uh, I'll ask them. And I would say almost 100% want the long-eared Batman, because like I said, that's that's the Batman I'm I'm more known for, other than Legends of the Dark Knight and Batman Year Three. <clears throat> so good questions, everybody. All right, so Superpower Review says, so his channel is mostly reviewing comics, statues. Mm -hmm. uh, he does some comic unboxings. He always tries to get guests on his show, people who are subscribers. He's only had one artist on before. And it would be an honor to have you on it. Yeah, sure. Uh, either, um, you know, if you want to leave a comment uh, so I can remember, or if you want to email me, um, john at johnbadyart.com. Probably next week I'm going to be uh, talking to a few more people because I want to do at least one podcast or YouTube a month. Um, just to spread the word that, Hey, I'm still out here. I'm still creating and, uh, you know, I'm doing YouTube videos and doing conventions and just to kind of keep the kids, uh, <laughs> keep, keep the kids, uh, in my, in my wheelhouse. So, yeah, uh, we could definitely arrange uh, a date and time. That's what I'm going to be doing with David, who is uh, Genome Presents there in the room. Um, he contacted me last year, and it was right in the middle of things such as convention seasons and stuff like that. And so... Finally, and also then Ron and I started renovating my workspace into something a little different. And uh, so I'm, I'm getting ready for, for that. So, yeah, not a problem.
if you have a link to your show, feel free to drop it in the comments. And uh, that goes for anybody who's watching. If you, you know, if you have a uh, David, you can feel free. Formerly the Rod Lion says there's been a small explosion of comic artists making videos on the YouTube. The yeah. YouTube. That was me. Mm -hmm. uh, glad I found you've done it too. Well, I started last year and I was uh, for quite a while. I was doing it every five days a week, at least. Um, usually early in the morning. Um, and I, I, I do enjoy it. So, um, you know. I, when I had to hit the road for conventions, it kind of went away and now I'm back. So I've got different goals with it. So I'm glad you found me and, uh, thanks for your support. And I think I'm about ready to wrap this Thanos up. And Ron, do you got a time for me? Because I, I, I had to take my clock down. <laughs> the ticking. It's one twenty-three. Okay. So I still got time to get Jacob, but I'm almost at the end of of this Thanos. I'm just wondering if I should do a very light wash over his skin tones but I don't think I should. I think the stark white, I think the uh, metal type stuff is better left in the gray. <clears throat> Any suggestions, Mr. Ron? Oh, I don't know. I don't maybe, know. I, maybe I need to. It's got that shine coming on it from the light and stuff. Although it's still kind of shiny. Some splatter behind this is going to look really cool. Um, hmm. I mean, if you gray that, you'll get the eyes to pop more. It's some of the that's metal. you know that's what I was thinking. Um, if I leave the the top of the you know the top the top the top this top that top, go ahead and gray these jaw lines down. The eyes would pop more. Although when I do the splatter, um, I'm just wondering if you know if they're going to be as dominant anyway. I could do the lightest wash, just you know, because he is purple, so that's why I'm thinking it. Back in the old days, kids. Uh, uh, actually, back in, in it, I think it's still, maybe it's not a hard and fast rule, but uh, if you'll notice, and it, it's not 100%, but just, you know, take a mental inventory of the characters. Uh, you'll find that most of the superheroes and heroines are done in primary colors, and the villains are secondary colors. Now, the Hulk's an exception there because he's green and purple, which are both. Which are both what, Ron? Secondary colors. Do I need to get you a color wheel? I do not need your color wheel, sir. Jared did. <laughs> I have my own. <laughs> there you go. That's right. You do have your own. Okay. No, I was trying to think of uh, other exceptions to your rule. Well, it's, you know, that one just came easy, you know. Um, but when you, you know, I mean, you look at Flash, yeah. red and yellow, you know, Captain America, red, white, and blue um, with yellow belt buckle. So definitely there is a... Um, a little bit of a standard. Yeah, let's see. It's...
This is just going to be a quick Formerly Rod Lyons says as a kid, he wouldn't have imagined being able to talk to comic artists like you. It's quite surreal. Yeah, well, that, you know, and I agree. That's the thing, because um, I grew up, uh, I'm 58, by the way, so I was born in 61. I didn't have this cool technology. Um, I had to write actual snail mail letters. And... Uh, I had a bunch of friends that were fans who I met through fanzines who I met or got to know their fanzines through a publication called uh, the Comic Buyer's Guide, which was a weekly newspaper. And that's how we would get our comic book news. And then the Internet finally, I think, killed that out. I think they even had an online edition of Comics Buyer's Guide for a while. <clears throat> okay now that little bit of light gray there i think it's gonna let the white pop even more okay so but yeah um Technology has really changed the playing field from when I was um, first starting out and first trying to break into the business. Luckily, uh, my mentor, friend, and uh, big brother, Mike Zek, I wrote a fan letter to him when I was 15. And uh, a couple months after, eh, maybe it wasn't even a couple months, a few weeks after, two, three weeks, I received a nice... Uh, letter back from him i had sent him down some a couple of panels of my inking um and he like took tissue paper and drew over them corrected some stuff and then sent me photocopies of some of his uh from a fill-in i think maybe it was the fill-in he had just finished uh master kung fu for me to light box and practice on so we have a long history together mike and i do and uh, still to this day, we're good friends, and uh, that's why at a lot of conventions you'll see us sitting together and uh, having a good time, and a lot of other creators that worked together back in the Bronze Age of the 80s, they no longer have a friendship, <laughs> and they don't want to, you know, be sitting next to each other at conventions or even be at the same convention, which is sad. Uh, yeah, formerly. Um, I started when I was 19. Uh, so definitely it's been a, uh, an interesting ride. Uh, I wish I would have done a few things differently in my career. Um, one, which was maybe push for more pencil work. But they really wanted to pigeonhole you into one discipline back then. Whereas now, if you can pencil, ink, and color, um, I think they're a little bit more uh, um, willing to to you know let you go that route. Back then, it was like uh, comics really came out on time, not the way they are now, where it's like it's a monthly, but it's not really a monthly because so and so is late, and they kind of let that pass. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, if you missed a deadline, that could be your end of the run on that particular book. And that's the other thing. Back in my day, when you worked on a book, uh, they, the comics companies, you know, they were looking, you know, they wanted to look at you as a two or three year person to stay on that book. And along with the writer, the penciler, the anchor, they wanted to form that team, which I think is a personally, I think it's a great thing because you get a creative team that um, really starts to mesh together after a, a bit of time, which it does take time. 
<clears throat> unless you've worked with those people before, excuse me. Um, it 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 becomes a really uh, you know interesting and fun uh, adventure. And I remember as a kid buying comic books, and when I would pick up an issue of whatever it was that I was reading, and it didn't have the same creative team, it was a fill in or something. I'd be really depressed because I'd be like, ah, now I got to wait another month. But I know the reason for fill-ins. It was like if somebody did get sick, couldn't make something, they would have a fill-in ready and uh, they wouldn't lose the press time. Now I'm not sure how it works because books are solicited, advertised. The first one comes out. Three months later, you might get the second one. Four months later, you might get the second one. And in the end, everything is trade paperbacked anyway within, well, around three months, 90 days after it's out. On yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, nowadays it's like, okay, so when it's, you know, when it's done, you can pick up the trade paperback with extra goodies in it for less than what you're paying for the monthly floppies. So I don't know what they're thinking there. Like I said, in my time, when your work got reprinted, it was because of a demand. You know, they couldn't go back to press as easy. Um, so when a storyline came about, like, say, the Deathlock storyline <clears throat> in Captain America, well, that was reprinted. Why? It was a popular storyline. I think it was a three-parter, maybe two. And, um, you know, they the company saw potential that, hey, we, you know, we're going to reprint this. Uh, Secret Wars was a natural to be reprinted, as was the Punisher miniseries. A lot of people fell asleep on the Punisher miniseries. They, I know that when the first one came out, it, it literally sold out across the U.S. that first day. And um, so it was a big hit. They went back to press with it immediately. I mean, as soon as they got, you know, hey, we're sold out. Can we order more? Marvel went into a second printing. I don't know if they went into a third or not. Yeah, that's true, David. Consistency. Um, you get the same creative team on a book and you all start firing on the, on all cylinders and a lot of fun stuff can be um, can be produced. So I am going to end this for now. I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, hope you give the video a like. Hope that those of you who wandered in and had not been a subscriber will subscribe. Please feel free to share any and all of my videos, ones that you like, spread them around, uh, tweet them, put them on Facebook, whatever. Uh, more content to be coming. Uh, Ron and I are going to do some more studio decoration uh, preparation tomorrow and get things ready for some of these interviews. <clears throat> and um, then Sunday, I have a small show in Deland, Florida, which is about, oh, a 30-minute drive from where I, I live. So I'll be there Sunday. And then Monday, I will be, um, I'll be back here working. And uh, I, I'm, I'm attempting two live streams to start the uh, year out. Hopefully, that can grow. But again, it's my time situation, figuring out what's going to work. And... I have a few more ideas. I don't really know how to approach them. One I mentioned in my video on Tuesday, which was a studio pass, which was going to be a pay for version of what you're seeing now. But basically what it would be is when I'm in the studio working, it would not be a question and answer time. I'll get to that in a minute though. Um, it'll just be a work time. And that's where uh, when I mentioned to David about the epidemic sound, I would be able to play some music, mute my mic. Uh, well, I couldn't mute my mic, or maybe I could. I don't know. I have to figure it out. Um, that way, I could go. I, I could go on about my business. You all could see me working on thumbnails, layouts, uh, maybe taking my rough sketch, light boxing it onto a finished piece of paper. Pretty much start to finish process on. 90% of everything I do here, uh, even 
working on my website. Yeah, that's certain stuff I have to do. Now, working on my website is different. I might open it up to a chat. You would be sent a private link. And uh, as I was saying, to make up for the lost time of the chat, uh, once a week, I would find a good time uh, that kind of worked for everyone. I know I can't appease everyone, but I would try. And um, basically what that would do is it would be like an AMA, ask me anything. I would spend about 30 to 30 to 30 minutes to an hour answering any of these questions you all have. Uh, I would just be at my other station taking some notes, maybe having a, you know, if, if I'm going to do a topic, if I want to talk on a topic like Captain America 321, Cap with the Uzi. Zach and I did the cover. Uh, Neary and I did the interior. I would probably reread that book and um, explain, you know, what I thought about it and then open it to questions. If anybody's interested in that, put it in the comments. I need to have five to 10, and this is where I started talking about a Patreon. Their business model is okay. They tend to take more than what I would like, and I haven't seen anybody very successful at it except for people in foreign countries that um, I've never heard of, but, you know, they might be doing well. Uh, I'd rather kind of control it myself. And also about Patreon, if you have one person, then you're committed to those um, perks that they get, those tiers. And, uh, you know, if I had one person that was willing to sign up for $9.99 a month, it, it, it be honest with you, it wouldn't be worth my time to invest that much into into making it happen into making it happen so five to ten consistently and growing if we grew it that would be fantastic um so that's kind of where my mental mindset is with this uh and this is extra outside of this type of stream these are always going to be free um the people that purchase these commissions like to see me do them uh, so I stream them free and it also is a, um, value back to you all who, you know, just want to sit down, maybe watch the whole thing, maybe not watch the whole thing, maybe get a chance to ask a question. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, uh, so with that, I got to pick up my son at three. That means I have to leave my studio about quarter after two. Um, I'm looking at a time now of, um, uh, yeah, formerly I'm going to do, uh, interviews. Um, so like I said, get in touch with me. Uh, if you didn't write down my email, it's, uh, John, John ba at johnbadyart.com or just leave a comment and, uh, I'll get in touch with you and, and I'm going to be making some phone calls to people next week after Ron and I kind of uh, get this ready uh, for interview type um, streaming, because this is not, you know, <laughs> I want you to see me on camera sitting in a chair, nice backdrop, uh, uh, that type of thing. So that's what I'm aiming for on that. Um, this is strictly my setup for doing artwork. Thanks, Ron, for putting that in there. And thank you for being able to co-host today, Ron. You are welcome. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it a day for now. I'm giving you all the thumbs up. Hope I get it back. And uh, like I said, subscribe, like, and share. Thank you very much. And I will talk to you again soon. Have a good weekend.